La donde esta? Let's hook across the cereal. <laughs> a next level nerd. <laughs> Telemundo TV podcast, though. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we, no, we know it's we know it's racist, Ashton. We'll get it in post. <laughs> yeah, like, y'all know he's like in the back of the corner judging us. <laughs> it's my go-to joke. I keep Ashton in my room to edit stuff. <laughs> She's like, yes, I'm writing down the, the timestamp, right? <laughs> <laughs> All Welcome to another Sugar Frosted Cereal Podcast. I know it's probably super weird, but welcome to another Sugar Frosted Cereal Podcast. Next Level Nerds TV Podcast. We're currently in the season of Daredevil. Season 3. Uh, we're on episode 5. Um, and yeah, so my name is Joe. With me today, as per usual, is Justin. Hello. And Bill. Blue. What the? <laughs> all right. Before we get started, I want to remind our listeners that that's you to do us a solid and send us all the likes and reviews you can. And be sure to share the podcast with your friends, family, and your friends on Switch. <laughs> I just got a Switch. Code. Yeah, if you can get their code. And if their name isn't Evan. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He takes three months to respond back to a friend request. Yeah. He was the first person to respond to my friend request on Switch. Are you serious? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's just cold blooded. Ah. Yeah. Cold blooded. My eyes just started twitching. <laughs> get, 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 get. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to take your nerdiness to the next level, uh, go to patreon.com backslash nest level nerd and drop us some pocket change to help us grow the podcast and the overall NLN community. Everything above a dollar will get you access to all our exclusive bonus content, including episodes from Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast, uh, as well as the Roundtable Discussion Podcast, and... Leveling Up. Leveling Up. Well, that's what the Roundtable, right? Yeah. All right. Leveling Up Roundtable. Whatever. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There's more exclusive stuff on the way, so... (laughs) But it's all yours for... As little as a dollar um, a month. And uh, if you can't support us with the, your cash, show us some love by giving us a review on iTunes or wherever you cast your pod. Wherever you use your pod. What? <laughs> I always fuck that up. Uh, wherever you use your pod. I'm casting mine right now. Cast your pod. Remember iPods? Anyway. <laughs> I do. We can also be found on Facebook.com backslash Next Level Nerd at our homepage. Um, is WW. Yeah, fuck. I read that as like one thing and then I was like, and at our. Yeah, whatever. I said it like the Facebook was the homepage. Anyway, go to www.nextlevelnerd.com. It's been a while since I podcasted and I'm way out of fucking practice. And what better episode to get back in the swing of things than an episode curated by me (laughs) for your listening pleasure. Um, So, yeah, we're in season three of Daredevil. We're on episode five titled The Perfect Game. Um, This episode um, is mostly about Dex. And just kind of, it, it gives a lot about his past, why he is the way he is, sort of. And um, so the episode actually starts with Dex in his um, apartment. And we get to see a little bit of his OCD control issues um, as he's just like keeping everything tidy um, in his apartment. Lines up a stack of Daily Buell bulletins. Uh, washes his perfectly white dishware and heads out the door where we get a glimpse of the pizza girl, his stalker girlfriend. 
<laughs> and just as he's walking out the door, the the picture actually like turns crooked, which I don't know why I just love that because it's like kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. And then it's even more creepy that he like slightly opens the door and then like pushes it back into place. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's definitely a, a creepy as hell dude. Yeah. It just makes me think that he's lazy and it happens all the time. And instead of fixing it, he just always <laughs> readjusts it every time he leaves his apartment. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and I just wanted to derail us for a bit, so... Sweet, thanks. Mission, Mission accomplished. accomplished. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, so in the next scene, we have a taxi cab that's being pulled out of the river. This is from the end of last episode where Matt um, just got out of the prison where he was trying to make a little visit, and he got the shit beat out of him. Um, but they pull the car out of the river and Matt's body isn't in it. And we see like Donovan on the scene and he's sort of relaying back to uh, Fisk that, you know, the body's not there. We need to take care of this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're, they're like talking about how, what's it called? You know, Donovan thinks like, the river took his body, but Fisk is like starting to put it together that like Murdoch is more than meets the eye. And yeah. he's a transformer. Like, yeah. That a blind man doesn't just <laughs> fucking like kick the shit out of a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what happened is, is Donovan's like, well, how does a blind man swim to shore? And then Fisk is like, pulls, I don't know if he's on like a cell phone or yeah, he's like on an, cell phone. Yeah, he an, an, an iPad or something. I don't remember directly, but he like starts showing them the fight scene, like in the prison since he has all the, the camera footage. Yeah. And they're like, Whoa, what the fuck? And, um, they have a really cool, like scene transition here where they like switch over from that to Dex walking in to take Donovan and Fisk to see Nadim where they discuss, uh, more of the offer, um, that Fisk has been given and Fisk lays out a scapegoat to Nadine, None other than Matt Murdock, who's apparently a crummy, shitty lawyer that's been working for him all this fucking time. <laughs> and right after that, roll the fucking credits. <laughs> it just doesn't seem to make any sense. Like, of all the things that can happen, he's like, oh, yeah, I can't get rid of him any other way. But Matt Murdock's been a lawyer of ours. Yeah. Um, it's convenient. It, it's not a, yeah, it's a little convenient, but you kind of see like pretty quickly that it's just like, um, it's just a diversionary tactic. So Fisk can get some, some shit done. Mm-hmm. It, Cause it, it keeps Nadine busy. Yeah. Um, which allows him to work on his new pet project, which is, uh, Dex. <laughs> yeah. Corrupting that young man. Speaking of Dex <laughs> in the next scene, um, after the credits, we have Dex running behind and stalking uh, that pizza girl like a fucking creep, like a super creepy. Like he, she, he's just like watching her like do all this like shit. It's like like knows, jog- he obviously jogging knows, behind her and staring yeah. at her and stuff. Yeah, and he obviously knows like her entire routine and everything like that. Yeah. Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah this this definitely <laughs> creeped me out. Like. The, especially like the scene where he's jogging because it kind of slow pans up and like focuses on her ass like he's staring at her ass the whole time yeah and it's like oh dude yeah. <laughs> you're not even trying to not be creepy no i was like how are you not caught like you suck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you might be good at your your gun gunmanship and or whatever marksmanship and uh throwing knives and all that kind of shit but like stealth you can broke yeah stealth <laughs> mode is broken <laughs> i mean that baseball cap he's wearing though really hides it <laughs> that's the marvel that's broke. the marvel disguise the oh baseball cap every yeah. fucking movie where they need to hide they put on a baseball cap and aviators 
I guess it's better than just a pair of glasses. <laughs> or, yeah. With a fake nose and a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> that Holding a be cigar. See? <laughs> Groucho Marks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, the swing. No, 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 no. The scene, Switchly, Switchly, I can't fucking talk. What the fuck? <laughs> well, it's because you were talk, talking about playing the Nintendo Switch earlier, so now every time you see Switch, you want to play the Switch. I know, right? Um, we switch <laughs> off to Nadine breaking into Matt's uh, place to arrest him, uh, but they just find some some wet clothes like strewn all about. Um, and then from there... As we see them kind of like going through all the apartment or whatever, we switch over to Karen, who's getting like way over her fucking head. Uh, she's yeah. trying. She's she's like she goes to the bar where actually I like guess kind of weird because I at first I thought this was the bar that Fisk is like in Fisk's building. Yeah, and I couldn't like I couldn't I can't remember if it is, but. She like just goes up to uh, Manning, who's uh, fix, fisk, 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 fisk. Yeah, I can't say say that. Fisk's fixer. <laughs> why did I? Why did I write that that way? Um, to Kingpin's fixer, Manning, um, and she tries to like pretty much like go to him into telling her like everything she wants to know. Like she thinks she's like such a fucking badass. She, <laughs> she just does. gets she... fucking. Knock down like twenty fucking pegs, yeah, uh, if not more, because Manning just reveals all he knows about her, um, her where home she address, lives, yeah, where <laughs> she lived as a kid, uh, what happened to her brother, all kinds of shit, where she slept in the fucking house, yeah, and um, I just love at the end of all that he clarifies to her that you know he doesn't fix problems, he makes them disappear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Karen's like, "Hey, my God!" <laughs> she just yeah. like fucking runs out, all spooked, and she's like walking sp- speedily down the street. Um, and she kind of keeps looking behind her, and then she, you know all these guys are like, look like they're following her, and she's like freaking out. And I'm like, "Is she just fucking imagining this shit?" Um, the first time I watched it, and then you know eventually like all these SUVs like pull up in front of her, and uh, she's like going to reach for like the gun in her purse. And I was just like, somebody shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it doesn't. Yeah, matter. she <laughs> definitely uh, overplays her hand here. Oh, and yeah. it's she like, almost gets, and she almost gets killed. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like, I mean, I'm joking about it. You know, I don't, yeah. <laughs> like, but like, she could have got killed like in this moment because she's so freaked out. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of surprised she didn't pull the gun, honestly. Because she's like fucking zero hesitation, like when she killed what's his name. Yeah, but th- this was a little bit different because this is where you really get the first glimpse of Karen's past when he like drops a line by saying, uh, "Drug addicts really do destroy families, don't they?" Mm-hmm. And that's where you really figure out like blow, blow. what Karen yeah. was. Yeah. Are you defending her? <laughs> Yeah, I like He's her now. Fallen in love, you, man. Get the like fuck off of this podcast. Talk so much shit about her and then started watching I'm her new show. I'm talking shit on Karen. I'm not talking shit on the actress. Yeah, yeah, well, it makes me appreciate her role as Karen more. Because I like her in another thing. Nice. Oh, have the mighty have fallen. We have. <laughs> we have. <laughs> so if you want to see the actress, what is her name? Who plays Karen? Deborah Ann Bull. Uh, redeemed. Go check on that. What's that site called? Al- uh, Alpha. Yeah, Project Alpha. She's Project doing, Alpha. A yeah, Dungeon she's, and Dragons. Yeah, she's Dungeon Master for, for relics uh, and rarities. Yeah. And apparently, Bill's like in love now, so it must be That's fucking a great good. show. Yeah, it, it must be good if like they change your mind, not only about like her acting abilities, but also like. A character that you hate, like that's that's pretty fucking powerful, man. I just uh, picture her like rolling like charisma checks for all of these things that she does now. <laughs> that's that fucking Kool Aid taste, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you and that dub, the Deborah Ann pull wagon. <laughs> all the teens are doing it. <laughs> Deborah Ann Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> 
the side tracks are fucking ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it turns out that the SUVs that pull up and everybody was following her was the FBI. And, um, she like kind of announces that she has a gun in her purse and she like slowly takes it out and they kind of diffuse the situation. Um, and then they end up taking her to Matt's apartment, which is like, I don't know, like it's immediately discredits Nadine as like an actual like good FBI agent whatsoever. Because you don't bring a suspect to a fucking crime scene. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, come on in. Can you contaminate it any more than it might already be? Right? Yeah. <laughs> This scene just like I was like, what the fuck? Just end the scene. And it's like the thing is, is between Karen and Deem and their chemistry on screen sucks. Like I don't really honestly think that the guy who plays like Nadim has much chemistry with anybody other than everyone else in the FBI and like Dex and uh foggy he doesn't really have good chemistry with Matt on screen like I don't think they yeah. really like flow together it doesn't really fit for me and it's even worse with Karen in the scene it's just I don't know it's it's such a forced scene to kind of like bring it like it's all these like bringing up things that like we already know and then yeah. he kind of gets make her in a sure panic. you make sure the audience doesn't question when we talked about this stuff don't forget when Karen killed what's his name yeah <laughs> he like brings out the picture and she gets all flustered and she like loses her shit yeah just, it's a Karen page ass scene yeah it's, and it's not good <laughs> no anyway it's bad Karen bad Karen bad Karen <laughs> I, I literally only wrote like a sentence for that and I went into it way more <laughs> <laughs> just like Karen Page <laughs> yeah she's oh a one God. sentence I'm character a monster. <laughs> with a paragraph story god damn um and now we we swing over back over to Fisk, um, who has Don Donovan, uh, bring him Des, Dex's uh, psychiatric records uh, that we we find out because he brings out this like it's like his new project, and Donovan's like, well, let me know when you're done. Like I brought an audio book, however, and like he doesn't even have headphones. Like how is he like reading this fucking book or listening to it? I don't know. It's He's just got weird. those AirPods. Does he have AirPods? Is that I don't what it know. Is? I just want to. That's like the new craze. I just yeah. want to throw that in there. I have a pair of those. Yeah, and you're lame. I mean, okay. <laughs> fair. <laughs> okay, fair. I don't know how to fight that. <laughs> um, so we get all these like um, flashbacks of Dex as a kid, which I, I really love the way this is like shot. Because it's all shot in basically the Kingpin's apartment. And they just yeah. change like some of the scenery. So in this scene, we have Dex like sitting on the floor of the apartment. But he's technically outside. And he's mm-hmm. like throwing a baseball. Like in the flashback, he's outside and he's throwing a baseball at the wall. And hitting the same spot. Which is basically crumbling the wall at this point. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then his coach like walks in. And he's like, oh, man, you're not ready for the game. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you got to get ready. Like, you know. And uh, he's just like kind of like dilly-dallying. He doesn't really want to go. And the coach kind of like bribes him by giving him this like new glove. Um, And he's like, all right, man, like we got to go. And Dex is like, hold on. I want to show you my new wind-up pitch. And um, so he throws a pitch or whatever. And he's like, oh, it's awesome. And then they go to the game. And um, I just love this like next kind of scene in the apartment uh, where it flashes to Dex like wearing the iconic like bullseye hat. Yeah. Well, I, not the hat, but like the symbol. The it's logo bullseye. is like his team's logo. Yeah. Yeah. It's freaking amazing how they do flashbacks in this show or like especially this season where he's talking to his dad and he's talking to. You know, he starts having flash or not like flashbacks, but like internal dialogue with himself almost, you know, where he sees Fisk and pretends Fisk is following him and talking to him. And it's cool just to see, you know, 
just the way they do that, you know, how they how they shoot everything like this and and this scene especially is just outrageously yeah the the awesome. storytelling the storytelling in this season is like top notch yeah and the way that it's directed and delivered to you is like even better like it brings all that storytelling to like its peak performance right. or whatever um which is why i mean like in my opinion i think this is the best season of daredevil Mm-hmm. just for like its consistency throughout like it always delivers yeah. like throughout <clears throat> whereas like you know season two we had like the super high of like the punisher and then like the beginning of the electra series and then it kind of like windled down a little bit and then the ending was like was really good but you know it was hit or miss at times yeah i think i think what season two had with with excellent single ap- episodes of writing Mm-hmm. Season three really has with just overall direction and storytelling, you know, it feels, yeah. it feels much more even, you know, because in season one and season two, it's like, there's a good episode. That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. There's a good episode. There's a good episode. That sucks. There's a good episode, you know? So there's kind of, it's, it's more just flat across the board and excellent. True. Um, <clears throat> So we're in this scene, um, and uh, Dex is making a wind up, and he's striking out all these kids. Um, and the coach calls like a timeout, and he says, "He's like, I gotta pull you. I gotta give the other kids a chance." And Dex just starts to fucking like lose it, you know, saying like all the stuff about his parents, um, you know. And the coach, like, I don't know, like when I watched this scene again. Like after the first time, I like at first I felt bad for the coach, but the, the next time I watched it, I was like, I don't feel bad for you. He basically like says the most dick thing can you can say to this kid. He's like, it's not gonna bring your parents back. It's like what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Where yeah. was that from? Yeah, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> Taking your all star pitcher out of the game because yeah. no one oh, can man. even hit well, the ball. Throwing a no hitter. And <laughs> him, it goes it goes so dark so throwing fast. the perfect game. Yeah. yeah. Totally the episode. It goes uh <laughs> it goes so far or it goes so fast like this the story like the darkness just jumps out of nowhere that like I seriously thought he was just it was just going to show him like hitting um hitting his coach in the crotch. Like just like you fucker, you, you know so like much America's funny some videos. Yeah, like the build yeah. up. Yeah, like, like the way they built it up, I was like shocked when he hit the coach and the coach just falls over dead. I was like, what the fuck? Dude, <laughs> like, the this best is like, insane. Yeah, he throws the ball because he he ends up like like relentless, like relenting and like sitting on the bench. Yeah. Um, and then like he gets so mad, he picks up a baseball, throws it at a pole and it ricochets and just kills the coach like outright. Yeah. <laughs> So insane. Oh, so fucking brutal. Yeah. And there's like no remorse on his face either. Yeah. Like, so I'm assuming this is this is still in the middle of the game too. So everybody that was there saw this happen. Yeah. Yeah. And they I mean when he goes to the psychiatrist not and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he goes to the psychiatrist and stuff, you know, he basically finds out like you know or you find out that that's why he's there is because he's a yeah. murderous little nut bar with all kinds of issues. Well, coach benched him, told him to hit the pine and grab a popsicle. <laughs> I'd be pissed too. Someone told that yeah. to me. I would have just walked home. I probably not have killed my coach, but fuck. <laughs> well, you're not a sociopath. So <laughs> you keep his car. I might pee on his door handles or something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so in the next scene, we find out what happens to Dex, um, and he's uh, <laughs> he's in a psychiatrist's office, and um, his psychiatrist is like asking him about what happened, like um, why he thinks he's here, and uh, she's going through it, and then you know he kind of gives some like vague answers, and she writes down that he has like borderline personality disorder. As Dex kind of goes off about, like, the coach was a jerk, but, like, oh, I loved him, like, you know, when he was, like, cool to me, but, like, I hated him when he was, like, pulled me out of the game. 
And then um, she grills him about it a little further and asks if what happened was an accident. And he, like, you know, she kind of gives him this little thing, like, oh, don't worry. Like, it's safe to, like, tell me, like, you know, it's, mm-hmm. like, patient confidentiality, blah, blah, blah. You won't get in trouble. Like, and he fesses up that it wasn't an accident at all. And then, like, she, like, frantically, like, scribbles down, like, psychotic tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, she was going to forget that. Yeah. <laughs> I better write it down so the audience knows. Yeah, it's kind of, it's like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> oh. um, but she, you know, we kind of see him, like, grow up a little bit, and it changes, uh... What's it called? He's like age changes and she gets a little bit older and she's like talking about trying to teach him like empathy and stuff like that. Um, we see him as like a teenager and Dex and Doc, uh, you know, and then he's older. She's dying. Um, and she ends up like, like it's obviously upsetting him and she's like, oh, you know, don't worry. Like, uh, here's are all your session tapes. Like if you need ever need to like go over anything, you can just like listen to him. And he's just like, Nope, I want to kill you. <laughs> um, it's just like pretty fucking brutal. Like we can see like that. She hasn't really helped them at all. She's just kind of like, she basically taught him how to hide it. Like that's what she's really done. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> actually a good, a good, uh, good read on that because I didn't, I didn't catch that at all. Um, now with you saying that I kind of like this, this scene a little bit more here. Um, you know, where he, you know, he wants to kill her. That's just crazy. Huh? I didn't think of it that way. Yeah. The worst psychiatrist ever. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I don't know. Did you watch season two of the Punisher? (laughs) <laughs> that's true <laughs> could be worse she could join him yeah she could fuck him <laughs> oh, maybe she would, was i would have messed up <laughs> this old dusty beaver i wouldn't want any pieces of that maybe before <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's what her queef sounds like i think what's great about this whole thing is like fisk in the background like so all these scenes if you haven't watched it they're all shot in like black and white, which is, you know, I think adds to the story in itself. But then there's right. Fisk in the background and like he's like even like his facial expressions and like how his body language, how he's just, you know, reading or listening to these stories. And he's really mm-hmm. like taking them in and you kind of get like how he's trying to understand them as well. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's pretty symbolic to the whole story as well. Yeah. And note the the colors, you know, the Defenders uh, uh, shows were famous for you know the yellow luke cage and the red daredevil and stuff and you look at this and it's black and white you know that's bullseye's colors from the comics yeah um yeah these are pretty like intense fucking scenes like mm-hmm. we're not like talking about them we're not really doing them justice and like all the stuff with fist going on in the background is like some of the really good parts of this scene like i don't even mention like when he throws the the ball like at the coach i think like fisk like picks it up yeah and he's like yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. um you D'Onofrio, know we... d'onofrio is just such a good actor just watching him throughout this scene he never has a line he just reacts to what the other actors are doing and it's just like, uh, it's so freaking incredible to see somebody able to do that, you know, just pull that off so effectively. Yeah, definitely. Um, and at least that's that scene of him, like she talks him down from killing her because really not going to do anything anyway because she's already dying. But um, leads into a, like another like fast forward to Dex as an adult. And he's working at a suicide prevention hotline. And this is sort of like part of that whole thing where I kind of like got the idea where like she just taught him empathy because he's just kind of like faking it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And this is where we see that he meets like the pizza girl, Julie, Julie, because we finally get her name. And um, he's talking to a caller and she's like, oh, you're doing a good job. And she walks away and he goes through these steps trying to tell the guy, you know, like, you know, what are you doing? Like, how do you feel? Blah, blah, blah. And trying to calm him down. And then he's like, why do you want to kill yourself? And he, you know, talks about his stepdad. And he's like, you know, he's like, why should you kill yourself? Like, he, he should be punished. Blah, 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 blah. And I think, like, this is immediately, like, when, um, in my opinion, where Fisk sees his, like, end to manipulating Dex and mm-hmm. how he can do it. Like, the whole punishing people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But also, you know, he he sees he sees that uh, relationship with Julie, and uh, like how Julie's not he he kind of gets it. Julie's not like the girlfriend that he has described previously, and so the yeah. audience kind of gets it too that she is this woman that he's stalking. And you know the way they the way they shoot that scene. It looks like a damn comic book panel. The way they show him in black and white, kind of under his own light, eating pizza, and Julie over there, and then Fisk just pops up in the middle. Like, it's just so cool how they do that. Like, play with the light like that to make it look like a, a panel come to life. Yeah, and I definitely agree with you uh, with the Julia thing because that's actually like what leads into the next um, scene is like you see him have his like in to manipulating him. And then like the next scene we have Dex in is he's at the bar and like, boom, Julie is there. Yeah. She walks up and yeah, walks up and takes his order. And then like, she realizes who he is and like, Oh, we know each other, blah, blah, blah. And he like, he asks her out and like his complete setup, obviously. Yeah. Um, I didn't catch it was a setup, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, she says it's her first day, and she got double the pay to leave her last job. Yeah, I didn't catch it for whatever reason while I was watching this. I just wasn't that tuned into it. But, I mean, it's so obvious now that you say it, but when I first watched it, I was just like, oh, wow, they really fucked him over. I didn't realize that they revealed so much of it that early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and this is like before this scene, um, transitions in the well, before it transitions in the scene, like Donovan asks Fisk what he's trying to do, and Fisk hypothesizes that he needs a new scapegoat to distract the public, and he has just the villain and then Dex. Um, and if you've seen it already, you know, like, you know, he takes on the mantle of like daredevil and kind of like mucks his name up but mm-hmm. um he does that through the like manipulation of like julia and stuff like that um but after the scene with dex and everything we go over to foggy who is at his campaign party at his parents place and it's at his parents place right Am I yeah it's at, the, it's at the deli yeah yeah and um, Nadine shows up and and starts to grill him about Matt and um, asks if he knows where he is and all this stuff like that. And you know, Foggy's like Foggy's pretty honest with him because like I think Foggy's still like pissed at um at Matt for everything, and he doesn't like help that like Nadine like reveals that oh yeah, like your buddy Matt, he stole your uh, like your ID your bar exam ID and uh, what's it called? I like how in the, uh, in the scene where Foggy's standing under that sign, it says meet the candidate, uh, Franklin Nelson. And it has a pic. It has a pic. Yeah. It has a picture of him on it though, too. That looks like, um, Biff from back to the future in the alternate 1985. Yes. Like he doesn't like the suit and the slick, like, Trumpish kind of hair, <laughs> a character culture. Yeah, it's not well done. <laughs> no, it's yeah. definitely not. 
Um, but, you know, Foggy's like, oh, man, you're just like kind of like ruining my spot here, blah, blah, blah. And that kind of like ends the scene. I didn't really get too into depth with that because this these scenes are like pretty straightforward. And they kind of, yeah. in my opinion, the scenes just distract from everything going on with Dex. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like we haven't even seen Matt yet in this episode, have we? No. No, no we're, look, we're, damn it, we're, there's 10 minutes left in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Daredevil has not been his. He's been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, we have Dex, um, and he's going out to dinner with um, Julia, and he, man, he royally screws the he royally screws the pooch on this uh, this date right here, yeah. and gives away all of his <laughs> creeper vibe. And then says a, a couple things that like he shouldn't know <laughs> about somebody her. needs somebody needs to edit this video with like the blind date. Doctor Joe <laughs> says awkward moment in three, two, one. <laughs> one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you like running? Yeah. How do you know I like running. <laughs> don't bring up shit like. <laughs> I don't want to make that though. It's yeah. as funny as it would be. I'd basically be like giving advice to like stalkers on what not to say on a date. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to give the ladies a chance to get rid of the stalker. No. I, if anything, I would do the show under the guise of like, oh yeah, I'll totally help you get this girl that you stalked and then just like get them arrested. <laughs> Damn creeps. Anyway. <laughs> Chris Hansen walks in. Why don't you have a yeah. seat? Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> Poor guy. I got a new idea for a show, Chris Hansen. <laughs> there you go. Call me up, Chrissy. How to catch a stalker. <laughs> um, but yeah, she like runs out. She's like all like freaked the fuck out. Um, and then the swing switches the swing. The sween. scene. I keep saying swing and swing again. <laughs> What the fuck? I can't didn't have enough beers. I, don't, I think. Uh, yeah, this this uh, French toast crunch porter really isn't doing it. It's not bad. It just has this like filmy aftertaste that like stays on your tongue. The milk. It's not even a taste. It's just like a film. It's kind of it's fucking gross. I don't know. <laughs> Rah, I'm with thirty percent more preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> I need some sequench. That's what I need. <laughs> Shit's fucking good. Um. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, Foggy and Karen, Karen Foggy, and this scene's boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like, I don't know if you guys have anything to say about it, um, but they basically just talk about shit we already fucking know, and talk about how they're still mad at Matt, and yeah. nothing gets resolved, and like we're just like here to like hear like I feel like we're in a fucking session where we're just like listening about their fucking issues with Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like boo hoo. Skip dude it. fights crime. Dude saved your fucking life. How many? Well, times? I mean, basically here, this is where Karen finally confesses the shooting. Wesley. Uh, that's true. During this scene, yeah, I guess that's the only really big thing. And uh, Foggy yeah. doesn't give a shit. I forgot about that. Uh, I was like, I was rewatching this, and I was just like, scrub like the next scene. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because the next scene is like fucking awesome. It's just Dex and he's just losing his shit in his apartment. And he's throwing and breaking things all over the place and he like cuts himself and they start to get like blood on his shirt and he's like freaking out trying to like wash it out. Um, but he, uh, this was just a great excuse for him to take his shirt off. It was it was a great excuse to like show that the dude's ripped as fuck. Yeah. But it was also a really good excuse to show him throw shit. Oh yeah, pinpoint fucking accuracy at the picture and just fucking nailed mm-hmm. right on the head. Um, and this scene ends with him like grabbing one of the session tapes, and we can see that he's using these to like calm himself down, like at time to time, and they mean like the world to him basically. Yeah, um, he's really clinging on to those things. Yeah, and I felt like the episode should have ended here, but we get. Uh, a quick shot of Matt crawling at the apartment um, 
as he got out, like he, we can see that he got out of the cab and he's just soaking wet. And he just like crumbles to the ground, and the episode like ends right there. Yeah, I completely lost track of Matt in this episode too, because <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, last the last episode ends with him crashing. Yeah. This episode, it's like, oh hey, look, he gets out of the water or something, and then at the end of the episode, it's like, oh hey, remember Daredevil in this Daredevil show? Uh, yeah. Eventually, you will have uh, superheroes on your superhero podcast. Um, <laughs> or damn it, I screwed that line up. Ashton, get it in post. All right, shut the door on your way out. So uh, yeah, the they just. Uh, finally show daredevil and there's two minutes left in the episode including credits and it's not even like something that happens after this it's like mm-hmm. all previous this is stuff that happened before yeah the episode like so it doesn't even like just show it, it doesn't the line up on that yeah. timeline show it's it edited weird it's yeah. edited weird but yeah or don't sure. show it at all we can assume like we assume that he was already there when the clothes were wet when they picked him up like yeah if you watched episode four, you know it would have been him. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I mean, anyway, I don't I've... have anything else for the for this episode. <laughs> I mean, I think overall it was a good episode. Yeah. Uh, it gave us everything we needed to know about Dex and even gave us that like behind the scenes like or like, you know, peeking over the shoulder of um kingpin fisk like Mm -hmm. realizing and hypothesizing and planning his like moves with using decks and manipulating matt and all that kind of shit one thing i always wondered about the editing with these shows is like if this show's on netflix and it all drops at once why do these episodes have to be built like regular tv episodes why do they have to fit in to one hour that time mark why can't i mean I would have taken a 15 minute Dex episode. You know what I mean? Cut that and put it where it belongs in the timeline. You know, there's no point in showing the shit out of order and stuff. Yeah. I mean, right. it's just the algorithm that they have that they follow. Yeah, it's, it's just what they do. Yeah. I mean, it's whatever at this point. Plus it makes it more like, it makes it more episodic. So you can watch like an hour, you know, an hour this week, an hour next week, and you can get, you know, a good chunk yeah. of information to keep you hanging on. I mean, I'm true. assuming most people don't binge watch them entirely like we do. Mm. A lot of shows. I mean, actually, that's a lot. I feel like a lot of people probably binge watch now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather binge watch than wait, like, watch six episodes, then them have, like, a winter break, and then watch six more yeah. three months later. Fucking Walking Dead used to do that. Fuck that show. When did you jump out of The Walking Dead? I don't know, like two years ago, maybe? Season three. As soon as the Garbage Pail Kids showed up. You were smart, Joe. As soon as the Garbage Pail sh- Kids showed up with all the, the fucking the junkyard dog and the tiger and the fucking dude speaking, like there was this supposedly all-out war that was just complete bullshit. It was so fucking terrible and hokey. I was like, what am I doing with my life? I think it, I think it was still good up until probably like the season before they did the Glenn dies fake out. I don't think was terrible, but that was a dumb show. First two seasons are pretty good though. That's because it's just the same formula. Like, they mm-hmm. do the same thing. Like they find a new place to live. They build up the community. They find a rival group. All they, shit breaks loose. They run from zombies. In between all that happening, someone gets bit. Someone loses a limb. <laughs> Rick cries. Him and Michelle, Michonne bang. Daryl rides his dirt bike around. And Wait, they bang. I didn't know that they bang. Yeah, Michonne and Rick got together because they killed the girl he was really with in the books. Glory. The white girl. Lori. No, not Lori. After Lori, it was the girl that, uh, the white girl, the blonde-haired white girl. Oh, 
I can't think of her name. I know who you're talking about. No yeah. idea. I, I don't can't care. Remember. That's how much Jess I don't hated care. her. <laughs> she got killed by the governor. I don't know. It's because she was banging the governor. Yeah. She's playing both sides. That chick. She was Angela. the destro of the you Walking Dead. A who. <laughs> All right, so we should probably close this episode of Daredevil out. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Andrea, by the way. Andrea. I was just looking it up. Fucking Andrea. Okay, sorry. All right, that's the show. <laughs> Super weird intro voices and outro voices. All right. <laughs> just a we reminder. We also hate The Walking Dead. Yeah, we also hate The Walking Dead. Don't watch that show. You get sucked into this miserable... You know what? The Walking Dead has no actual point. That's the problem with that show. This is just it's a soap opera that could go on forever. <laughs> kind of like this. Young and the restless. Kind of like this outro. Anyway, remember to check us out at nextlevelnerd.com where the opinions are so good they ought to be facts. Like don't watch Walking Dead. <laughs> or do, whatever. You know. It's a free country. We will it's judge you though. It may not be depending on where you live, but <laughs> <laughs> And be sure to like, subscribe, and share all of our podcasts with your friends, family, and that ghost living in your closet. What? Oh, no. Tell them about such podcasts that are so legendary, such as the Next Level Nerd Herd Gaming Podcast, the Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast, 321 Lay On, the Live Action Role Play Podcast, and of course, Best of the Bunch. Sugar frosted cereal. Say what? I'm a little biased. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm a little biased. I mean, you'd be a lot of biased if you said <laughs> yeah, that. Super biased. <laughs> anyway, we want to keep creating quality shows like this super high quality babbling show. Yeah, we need to sense. start with quality shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we also want to ask that you could head on over to patreon.com backslash next level nerd. And leave us a dollar or more. And donating at any level will get you exclusive bonus content each month. If you donate more than a dollar, there's even like special tiers of things like choosing a topical episode uh, or a topic for an episode. I don't know why I say topical episode. I mean, Um, it'll be topical. It'll definitely be topical. (laughs) (laughs) Hold it out. All right. (laughs) Anyway, if you can't support us with cash... Uh, Because you're just not there yet, and we're not at the next level either. (laughs) Support us by giving (laughs) us a review on iTunes (laughs) so that you can find Uh, us easier. The Nerd Herd has been discussing the creation of several new shows on topics such as beer, nerd parenting, comics, and music. And like I said, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you can catch the next week's episode when we will be talking about Season 3 of Daredevil, Episode 6. If you want to watch along, it's currently streaming on Netflix, even though it was canceled. God damn it, Disney. Stop ruining all (laughs) things that I love. Until next time, spread the word, spread the nerd. What the fuck, Disney? I love Disney. You you wash your damn potty mouth. <laughs>